Meet two early years advisors with a passion and a purpose to take the learning to the children and to take the fun outdoors. Part of Sue and Sheila's role as advisors is to visit early years settings to work with the staff. One such setting is St John's First School in Kidderminster, where they're familiar faces, and where Sue has come today to help with some outdoor activities. There are a variety of ways that children can be playing outdoors, and I think all of them are valid, but I think there, there should be a broad balance of, of activity. There isn't any area of the curriculum that you can't take from the inside into the outdoors. Um, and children can transfer skills that they've learnt indoors, outdoors, and vice versa. They happen in a different context, mm. but they are making sure that those skills are embedded. Because mm. we're not really talking about taking the painting table outside, are we? No. We're talking about having a large, maybe a long wallpaper table outside and doing large painting outside, something that perhaps you couldn't do inside. So it's, it, that's the way that we're talking about transferring skills. Yes. On the island. Yeah. Yeah. Children who are only ever kept in very safe places are not the ones who are able to solve problems for themselves. Children need to have a certain amount of risk taking be allowed to take risks because otherwise they know when they are in situations that are perhaps dangerous they will know how to get out of them. And also to be responsible for themselves as well. You're, you're allowing yes. them to be outside with potentially risky things to use and they need to be, you know, you need to say to them I'm, I'm asking you to be responsible with this and they will then become responsible. Some of the class will be using the outdoor environment for a more directed activity, while Sue will be providing an opportunity for the others to explore real materials. I am King Bear. I live on Bear Island. I want all the bears with numbers on one. The children are about to embark on a journey to Bear Island, using a story as their starting point to go past lots of dangerous things to get to the island. Mrs. Morell will help you. Tell her what you might see on the way and what you'll take with you. I must go now and have my breakfast. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. We've got to go on an adventure all the way to Bear Island. <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's a, a bit of a selling job at the moment because if you're inside in a nice warm classroom or setting or church hall, then it sometimes is quite an effort to, of organisation in order to be able to let children be outside. So I think, first of all, the mindset, you have to change the mindset, I think, of some adults to be able to have the door open, for instance, when, you're, when it's cold outside is quite difficult. But I think it's so exciting for children to be outside. Right. Can you look at me then, not at King Bear? You're going to see him in a minute. How exciting if you're having a story inside, group of children and the practitioner inside, and then to be able to take that story outside for the children to be part of that story, maybe following a trail that you've already set up. Put your wings out. Can you see Sue? She's waving at you. And you're going to fly to Bear Island. One, two, three, four, five. Bye! 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 While some children fly off to Bear Island to explore what to do with Sue's real materials, the others begin a journey of their own that's been constructed for them. Do you think you can manage to crawl through there? Yeah. Off you go, Kira. <laughs> the children can experience the story, and you can bring into that all kinds of the areas of learning, can't you? I mean, to be able to do counting and number work as part of the story, I think, is a much more meaningful way. And they will remember that story much better than if they just were told it. Get out. I know, I can't get through. <laughs> I can't get down. <laughs> right. 
Well done. Give yourselves a clap. You got through the first bit. We need to be able to take calculated risks, not risks with children. But I think if we take all the risk away from children, how are they ever going to learn to cope when they are uh, meet situations where they don't always know the right answer? Oh, go on, then. that it's really, really deep. So how can we get over it? Is there anything we could use anywhere? Ladder! When children are outside, yes, obviously in the summer it, it's lovely, but you need to talk about some protection and involve parents in that. And also in the winter, when it's, it's cold, um, children still need to be going outside. They need to experience the cold weather. It's no good saying, oh, it's cold. They need to know what being cold means. So you, you, you provide them, make sure that the children have got warm clothes to put on. And then the children rarely, rarely will say, uh, I'm cold, or they will rarely complain if they're outside in the rain. How exciting! children to be outside with a mac on and wellies and warm gloves and be able to be in the rain. Don't fall in. Keep on the rungs. Are you going to you going to crawl then? Are you going to walk? Oh, she's going to walk. Good girl. Well done. It's important that you talk with parents. If if you are going to be taking yeah, you're going to be taking children outside because you can sometimes, as a practitioner, you sometimes have to deal with the, the situation of, you know, oh, my child's come home and they're wet and muddy, or they've got dirty socks today, you know, and I don't want them going out and being dirty or they get cold. And I, and I think that's when you, as a practitioner, should have clothing for the children. To and should explain why and should explain, it's important. Yeah, because then most parents, every parent, will be glad that their children are being outside. You can't beat that, can you? Well done. Oh, that was the hard thing. It's also the smell outside. Yeah, the smell. And I think very often we spend our, our lives in homogenised classrooms and we don't then experience smells. And all our memories are laid down with smells. Our smell area is very close to our memory area in our brain. And we've all got memories that are triggered by, by smells. While the hazardous journey to Bear Island continues, Sue has opened up her bag to reveal those real materials. Oh, what have we got? Now then. What have we got? What's this? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be a bus. Do you know, I think that's a really good idea. You need to risk assess all the things you take outside for children, but you can't completely take the risk out of it. Children can do things with a rope but they ought to be able to experiment. And what the adult does is keep a watchful eye. But you cannot be there all the time when children are doing things. You behave like a reasonable parent would. And you've got to give children the opportunities to experiment and to see the limits of the resources that you've got. Often children will mirror the activity that they're having inside, that they're doing inside, with, with doing it again outside, perhaps in a larger way. An absolutely super thing to do is to have a large pumpkin inside and a, a, perhaps a pile of golf tees and with a small hammer. Yeah. And the children will hammer the golf tees into the pumpkin. And the, the concentration and the, you know, it's an exciting activity to do. And then you might provide some sticks and some mallets outside and they will go and do the same activity outside. Um, and I think it's exciting and they will concentrate on that. If children only ever use plastic, they don't get a feeling here of building up their muscles, which is so necessary for writing. So if you've got a hammer and you're able to use it and control it, you're building up the muscles here. And if you've got real bricks, children can learn the weight of them. And that's so important before they ever start to write using their wrists. 
Why do we have to be careful with them? So we don't hit they our might. hands. Yeah. And what else about hammers? Don't what else could you do? You could hurt yourselves or you could hurt work. somebody else. And, and this is where the sensitive adult is really, really important because, you know, the, you, your adult needs to be there but not necessarily um, interfering. Or um, asking inane questions. Yeah, what are you doing that for? You know, why are you doing it? It's, it's just, just sensitively intervene when you think maybe the child needs to, to move on or wants something else. So I think it's really important. Things like this, you know, bits of chain, have them so that if a child wants to uh, use them imaginatively as water, for instance, in a waterfall, then that, that's super, isn't it? I mean, look at that. Oh, they that's can lovely, isn't it? wrap them around these, can't they? I've seen children doing that yeah. before. As a practitioner, you might have an idea of what you'd like the children to make with the materials. Um, often it doesn't work because they spy something that they really want to use and it ends up as uh, a waterfall, it ends up as maybe a bridge uh, and you need to go with that and follow them, follow their ideas. And it's all about expectations, isn't it, really? Of course it's, it is. You uh, teach children how to use them, yes, don't you? Yes, you do. And you, you do quite a lot of role modelling. For instance, when you were using the, the stick and the mallet, you know, you would first of all, as an adult, been playing with the children and you would, you would demonstrate and talk about the safety aspect. And I think that's really, really important. Yes. And trust them. What is it? of the river that could be stepping stones. Have we? Yeah. Yeah. Have we? Can you see what's on these things? They're not stepping stones. There's numbers on them, is there? So do you think King has put them there to help us get across the river? Yeah. So what will we have to do with the numbers then? Go one, two, three, four, five, six. Absolutely wonderful. If you've got a number, go and find the same number. Having scrambled through tunnels, over mountains, across huge holes and ice fields, the children are just a few short steps from their journey's end. What are you going to do with it now, Daniel? We're going to Right, so you put it somewhere in the river. Right. Yeah. Who's got number two? Right. That's so heavy, isn't it? Right, who's got number three? We need to take children outside, and get them to experience the outdoors as much as possible, because this generation of children are the most protected we've ever had. You'd be a bad parent if you let children do what we did as children, go off and experience play in the street. And so now we've got to set up situations where children feel that they're experiencing smells, different kinds of weather outside, and that just can't happen unless we have lots of places to take them outside.